In the next video I'm going to explain how to paint the Chaos Sorcerer. I'm here with a new tutorial. This time, uh, this was the uh, one that has the most votes in the, in my uh, community part, in my community blog. So was the Chaos Sorcerer. So I'm going to explain how I will paint the Chaos Sorcerer that you have here. I will use contrast, uh, so you can also replicate that. Uh, as I, uh, this was priming white, and I think here contrast can make me the. Uh, life easier. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to paint him to be able to use it uh, as uh, uh, in any chaos, um, uh, I would say any chaos um, mark, okay, so he can be, uh, and for to that, to make it as an absolute chaos, I will paint him with black clothes, black, black armor or dark metal armor, and then some details. So we, and we are going to make the skin really, really pale, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, black Templar here. And uh, you will see, uh, here I think it's also experiment for me to see how black Templar will look like on clothes and armor. Um, and see how this works for future. And I'm doing first the black Templar, although I want to, do the, I want to start with the head. Because I need to, to go here inside, right? And we need to make, we will have to make sure that inside here we have a nice uh, black, right? We have a nice shade. If not, it's going to look weird. So I need to really do that. And doing that, you can see that you dirtan the skin. So we will need to clean up the skin later on. Okay, and now I want to be sure that I do all this black inside. Okay, I don't care if I did a little bit the skin here. And now we can do the other parts in more, uh, uh, more accuracy. Okay. Uh, I, going, I will try to avoid to do the rims of the armor, uh, I, will, I will like to make them in gold. So it's going to look, be very black legion uh, looking like oh, uh, okay. So we are going to play like that. And uh, the symbol of chaos, so this is a little bit glued, no, okay. It's not glued in the right base, so this is why you see that it's moving a little bit. I just put it on this base for paint up um, reasons, but I'm uh, putting him in a desertic type of uh, base. Okay, so we are going to apply um, black Templar, and in the advantage of applying black Templar for me is that you can see the shade when you do that. So it's a way to have instead of having a pit black base coat, we are going to have a gray. Uh, shadow with gray, okay, and this will give us a sensation of black once we have put all the other colors. Uh, the trick to paint black is not to use black as a base coat. So it's the trick to paint black is to to use a dark gray as a starting point. Okay, I learned this after a lot of black miniatures making it in the wrong way, and I still do it the wrong way. My old uh, mm, how it's called this. Uh, the Vokari, the ones that I just painted before, I started in the wrong way as well, I started with black. I recommend, it's much easier if you start with a dark grey, and I think this is why the black templar grey is so... The black templar, sorry, um, is so good. Okay, because it gives this reshading light, light that it's, it's uh, helping us. Why I don't do the trim of the armor is because I want to do them in gold and I, I like to avoid to paint the details although if I dirt in them I'm not too much concerned but I try to avoid to paint parts that I don't want black because in that way I can see uh, how the composition is building up okay but the other thing is the trim I will do it just on the outer part okay so all this will go in metallic at the end on, on, when I say metallic I mean iron metallic Okay, we look like that, and this is an armor that he's wearing, looks like he's wearing an armor here, I need to think, it looks like the upper part is he's wearing an armor, maybe this is the robe, but the, the clothes are going to be in black, and the armor, later on we are going to change it to uh, metallic. The hands we are, are on a skin tone, ok, 
okay, and they will go in a very pale skin. Okay, you can see that I'm trying to. Okay, so I will put all the black. Uh, I will put, uh, put all the black templar, and once it's done. I will be back uh, and I let it dry and then I'm back to show you the next step. Okay, next step, for well, now you can see how it looks like once the black templar have been applied. Okay, so it looks quite nice to be fair. And with one layer, just eh? we are going to do more highlights and clean up because you will always have this type of white things there that you need to clean up a little bit. But so far, so good. But now I'm going to paint, now that I have this base color, I'm going to do the face. And to do the face this time, I'm going to do something different that I'm used to do. I'm going to use uh, a scale 75 paints, okay? And I want to uh, we'll play with the, uh, it's called this, uh, pale skin, pale pallida, or sombra india, Indian shadow, okay? So, this is a, a very white, and a very pale color and with these two colors we are going to work to make the skin tone okay we will start applying a layer of the pale skin first okay i put this in the wet palette because then i can keep the paint moisture for a longer time i need to mix it well because it seems that the okay the Scale 75 paints have a different texture, so get used to, the, to it. Okay, and it's a little bit more transparent in that case. Also, needs a little bit more time to dry. Centered. see the first part. I will also do the horns. is quite Want to have first a nice base before doing any other color. This is very similar to Floyd One Flesh. Okay. I will wait this device first. Layer, so I will do the hands.
to the other hand. Now I will start working with the red color, okay? What's the Indian skin? So I will start applying this on the eye, eyes part, okay? Now we can use. can use as well. I will mix it a little bit, I will make a, a pre-mixture here in my, in my palette. I will go in this region. a bit of a Now I will base of the horns
you remove me, I normally remove part of the excess of the paint. Uh, so, on a paper, but not to make the eyes perhaps darker. going to take very little red with a lot of white so pinkish color I want to do it I'm going to play it there okay, the rest I want just to put the red around the bones The mouth I will not put this red. Okay, I will keep the red just for the skin tones. Mouth we are going to put more brown color. Oh, we want to learn a little bit. Just marking where I want to be darker. I know that this is too harsh, so now we will be white. Okay. Clean up. And I go with extra white. pinkish color when I do it um, intermediate color I just mix to my taste the red with the white with the pale skin I do the shade there and now white I let it dry okay and now I'm going to work while this the other part is drying I'm going to work here yeah, they need to go darker for sure at the base of the horn. Okay. Be careful because the the, the one thing that the scale seventy five paints have is that they are very very matte. Okay. So sometimes we even need to put a little bit of satin at the end. Here is to keep very right at the base of the horns. Right, we need to repeat what we did on the front part. We need to more or less to do the same level. Okay, so we go up again with this red. Now Whiter. And I go down. I do the same here, just to have same tone. Again, we let it dry, but we can insisting to put 
darker color yes especially here here part I want them to look really pale okay it's a very small Now we'll take a mixture. I'm working with the white or the palette skin to make the highlights and to to you know, really pop up all the different details and the expression of the face. Playing a little bit of a mixture. Is that fair?
a little bit the color here. We need to make, you see, we have some brush strokes there. We need to clean up this part a little bit. soft pink and we do this and here that I see that this is quite an important jump come with intermediate color a little bit darker color no the hands we are going to do similar process I'm going to apply a little bit on the palm okay and at the between the fingers but that's all okay and now we are going to apply Say white, I mean the pale wheel at this stage. On this hand, what I'm going to do is I'm taking very soft, and I go between the fingers. Not too much. This kind can be a little bit easier because of that, because it's it's um. okay, and now we go back with the berry color on the face so this is still the skin tone but now I'm just using the pen without any mix and it's looking so mad this is the problem I have sometimes with the scale 75 prints. They are too much sometimes for my taste. Okay, so I think I will apply a little bit of blood bar satin varnish before here I, I will go 
with a barium layer of the pale skin. And I find that it, uh, I made a space there with the pinkish color, so it will come now. Take almost the pinkish one. I put a little bit of shadow on the here. Okay, and I still have something that I don't like. Here I have this heart sensation, I will apply a little bit of intermediate color and I will put something like that here. Yeah, it is very windy outside today. Sorry if this part is taking long, but I wanted to show you the full process. So now you can take even a darker color. This is touching the purple. Okay, it's called um, American Shadow. It's also more is more purplish. And I'm going to apply this just there. I'm going to do now, I'm going to take Agvax Air Shade and I will apply it in the mouth. Okay. Why I do that? I want I don't want the mouth to right. I just want to but I want to create the shade on the mouth. You will see that by applying Agvax Air Shade will be enough. And I will apply the Agnes L shade as well in the eyes. This will give even more depth to the eyes. You see? We need to wait that it's dry in the meantime, so we can work a little bit on the hands while this is drying. Because the guns still we have too harsh transition, so I want to add a little bit pink at this moment to make it softer. And on the back of the hands, I will do the opposite. I, go, I will go wider, okay, and I will try to. Now I'm going to take uh, when I find it, of course. No white scar. I want to take the 
Charlotte Witch Flesh. So here they have the Palin Witch Flesh. Witch Flesh, sorry. And we are going to make these things even more extremely pain. Cheeks, the part of the, of the eyes and upstairs, up, up the eyes, sorry, the part up, uh, up, up above the eyes. We try to make the expression to exaggerate even more the expression. Okay, and what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to put a little bit on the hand. And I'm going to I can leave it a little bit there. Yeah. So we can do Let's do the eyes. No. So I'm going to take yellow to make the eyes uh, like little eyes. So I'm going to use flesh is yellow. Any bright yellow will work.
see in the car. Let's look it. Let's do it bigger when this happens. We'll make it that bigger. And then we clean up. We are going to solve it. Okay. I will wait that this drives and I'm back. The yellow have dry, but as you can see, uh, I did not apply it in the right places. I went too big in some places. So now I will use Corvux black. Okay. And what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the pupil of the eye. We want to make from the top something like that. the same on the other side. Okay, although it's looking strange now, I'm going to take the very dark red and I'm going to go around the eye, cleaning up where the yellow overflowed. We are going to do the same here. here. Since that this eye is not going to be my eye today. not going to be a problem. I will take another yellow that is not that fluid. Okay. So small that we are not going to see too much difference. And now it's looking how I want it. Okay. Now we have the face. But for my taste, it's too matte, the, the skin. Okay, it looks like. So I will apply a satin varnish. Okay, it's a varnish that is a medium uh, tint between gloss and matte, and I'm going to apply this on the skin. So I have here Vallejo, I have this one, okay, satin acrylic varnish from Vallejo, so I will apply it on the skin. And then we are going to wait that dries, okay. Let's take a brush that is not that good. Take a brush. Let's 
to be super precise here, but we need to be uniform, okay? So I'm going to apply this. Don't worry if you see some whitening. Once the varnish has dry, we will not see any of this whitening. But you can see that when it's a little bit satinated, okay, for me it's looking better. It's not going to be as gloss as you see now, once the varnish will dry, it's going to be a little bit more glossy than before, but not glossy, okay, it's going to be more or less like a, a, a citadel paint. The glossiness, the shiny of the skin also or the, or the paints, I, wa I want to say, can uh, play impact on how you see them, okay? So here we have, we have this face painted. I wait at this device and I come back for the next step. Okay, this how looks like once we have put the, the satin varnish. As you can see, it's not very gloss. Uh, it's more or less... Um, I, I find it more lifeful because the, it looks more like uh, the skin should look like. Okay. Now we are going to start working on the armor. I will start applying lead belcher as a base uh, for as a base coat. Okay. I'm going to take brush. Uh, if you want to thin down metallics. Uh, I, do, I recommend not to use water, use uh, thinner always because the, the metal particles is not, are not mixing very well with the water and the suspension is broken, okay? So you lose the homogeneity and then it's more difficult to control the paint. I suggest always use thinner uh, if you want to dilute um, metallics and I don't recommend to use the metallics on a wet palette. Okay, so here you have and we are going to do all the different armor plates. I like a lot, I start with this dark metal when I want to go for this is also this guy is quite that's quite layers of, of um, armor This is not, there is nothing special on doing that, so I will do this off camera and I'm back for the next step. So here you have, this how it looks like, no, I also did here on the saw, okay. And now I'm going to do the trimming with gold, okay, and I'm going to use Retributor armor for that. I'm going to do as well the gold parts on the staff and some details and this is another step that does not require too much uh, yeah it's not uh, does not have any tweak just applying the gold or where you want gold right it's not nothing else a retributor armor I like to use it a lot as a gold as a base gold uh, as it has a very nice coverage and you don't have to apply browns or ochres before the gold. It works very well. In that case that I'm playing with dark colors, okay, although the miniature was primed in white, it works perfectly. Okay. So I'm going to do that on all the trimming and what I will do on the trimming, I will leave so you can see that I, I, I went a little bit over with the silver. Now it's a moment to define very well 
where we want the gold and where we don't want the gold. I will not have the gold here inside of the shoulder pad, I will just put it on the surface, right? Where will it go? So I will just go to the border as it is just a decoration that is placed over the border of the armor. Okay. After this step, we should not have white on the armor. If we still have white, is that we miss a spot, so we need to correct everything where we have white. So I will do that on the whole armor, and I'm back once it's done. Okay, the gold has been applied to the places. And one thing that I did not dig gold is here this part of the eye as I will do here a skin tone to make it look more um, I will say um, oh, don't say it, I'm fine the word no make it look more scary in a way no more now what we are going to use is um, I'm going to use Gothar Brown and I'm going to use this on the bell and the scarf of this sword. I am going for this brown because it's a little bit off. And I like a lot, what it looks like. So now I'm planning to do just wash and putting it a little bit. Here I have a small breakage on this piece. Okay. So I'm going to apply this here as well the handle on this of the sword and the bell. Okay, I try to to do it on the armor this time. So carefully, and here you see that there is a mistake there on the row, on the cloth. Sorry. So I will, I will apply uh, again later on uh, another. I will touch with there is a lot of wind outside. Okay, so I will do that. Here I've missed the one of the pointy part of the star. So this is normal that we have to go back and forth in color. You everybody can miss spots. Okay, but now I will finalize that. I will finalize the brown and I will come back with the gold to touch the details that I miss. Okay, because I want really to have a good base. We are going to apply Agath air shade over all the parts. I mean the armor, gold, and brown. Okay, you can see. Okay, so I will do the belt that goes down. I will do all the. Uh, I will do the corrections that I explained. The small gold I miss here. And then I come back for the next step. Okay, mm, this is how it looks like now with all the brown in place. Uh, now, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use Aglax Air Shade, and we are going to apply Aglax Air Shade on top of the metallics and on the brown parts. Okay, I will try to avoid the gold. But we want to do, we want to be sure that we have a good touch around next to the gold. Okay, want to give this will give a old look to the armor. Will help on the shading. Okay, and as you can see, it's quite straightforward. Uh, and, and yeah, 
I will I will try to avoid as much as I can the gold. Uh, try to avoid to the alternative. Here it's important to have some brown there. Yeah, you, it's Agnes Air Shade will work very nicely, and I prefer Agnes Air Shade than gold for this. I don't know than um, what you call this now? Than noon oil, okay? Because Agnes Air Shade will give the look of uh, older the metal. And now it'll be dirty that much better with uh, the ancient look that I want to give to the chaos people. You can see here I go on the scarf of the sword. It's quite a straightforward step. Here I go on handle so we'll mark all the different stripes. So this way you want to use uh, another thing that uh, it's important when we paint Okay, it's to, to understand the steps that you will do, this is win with experience, because some colors, yeah, uh, normally I use this lighter brown because I know I will get darker once I apply the Aguax Air Shade. If I go for a very dark brown, the Aguax Air Shade uh, will not do almost uh, anything. Okay, here we have a small problem with the excess. Side of this. I want to do this. This is important here. I'm using here quite a, one of the damage brushes. This is why the, the tip is opening so much. And now, what we are going to do is we are going to wait at this device. Okay. Uh, I will stop the tutorial at this point. Okay. Because, um, yeah. It, it, I need to dedicate some time to all the days and I want to keep the videos a little bit shorter. Okay, so I will stop the tutorial at this point and I will be back on the next second part to do the final details and we are going to do the highlight on the black uh, and this stuff. I hope you have enjoyed this part, this first part on the painting of the Chaos Sorcerer. It's a quite interesting miniature to paint, uh, it's more interesting than what I was expecting at the beginning. And keep tuned if you want to see how the work finished here. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!